that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday, June the 24th. I'm Emerson Collins. And I'm Del Shores. And you're listening to The, the Dell Del and Emerson, Emerson Show. Show. Straight talk. Real gay. And this week's episode of The Dell and Emerson Show is brought to you by Equality Vodka. And the studio audience says, yay! I'm trying to direct over here with, with motions, and it's all a little late. It's all a little late. How are you? It's fine. It's a big all week. Hi, Del Shores. I'm great. How are you? Yes. How are you? Uh, This is my, on Periscope, we call this my bro dude voice. This is uh, my big boy. It's it's my mask for mask voice. Yeah. When I I, I was a a kid and uh, did radio at uh, KRZI Radio in Waco, Texas, they called it the big boy voice. Uh, You lowered just a little bit. When I uh, did it for Baylor, it was KWBU Radio Free Waco 107.1. And when, when, when did you when did you go on the air? Uh, I was on from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. on weeknights during the summer. That's much and better. some nights I would just talk. It's how I started this basically. I would just I said, y'all, I'm just going to talk until someone calls in and requests a song so that I know that one person is listening. And some nights I could talk for 15 or 20 minutes and nobody was listening. And then one of my roommates would call and be like, "Shut up." Oh, well, at least they were good roommates. They didn't hate you. <laughs> well, how was your weekend? You had a big fun oh, uh, performance. I, I had such a great... Tell us about w- it. I was in Salisbury, North Carolina. Like the steaks. Yes. Well, they said it's not named after the state. They gave me some... They started the history, and I just zoned out. I don't remember what it was, but I love those people. I had such a great time. It's a little town of like 33,000. It was their fifth pride and they, they haven't, they've not even had a parade because the mayor will not give them the permit. But they have their, their festival each year. They brought me in this year. It was the first time they had brought, brought someone in, and I headlined, and they packed it out. And, yeah, and then, then the protesters showed up, and I got in a little skirmish with the police. <gasps> oh, my God, shocking. What yes. happened? Well, you know, they, 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 they knew who I was, so they coached me. They go, now, we don't engage. <laughs> And you said, the protester. well, I do. And I go, it's so hard for me not to. There was this one asshole that was carrying a cross, a white cross made. Oh. He, it looked like Did he, you tell him Jesus already did that? Yeah, but, and his was so ugly. It looked like he had made it out of rain gutters. Like he just tied some rain gutters together and made this fucking awful cross and then he had this sign that had all these scriptures on it and so and he's just screaming because they have to keep outside of the festival right 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 up to it sometimes a foot gets in and i was just wanting to stomp a foot just stomp it if it came in that's assault so so i yeah yes i i held my foot and i waited till but not your tongue not my tongue (laughs) screaming at me and so i i or at all of us and i just said i could quote scriptures too and I started quoting, you know, Judge Nod and all the scriptures that I love. And he was and this guy. This guy goes, oh, the Judge Nod scripture. Well, let me find another one that 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 basically he said that there was a scripture. I don't know where it was that he could judge any sin that he had not committed. Oh. And so he had not committed the sin of sodomy. So he felt like he was, was missing out to judge us. So anyway, it ended kind of with me saying, well, I have another scripture for you. Have you ever heard this scripture? Fuck you. That's the first chapter of Del Shore's fuck you, motherfucker. And then the police came and they said, "Uh, we would appreciate you not cursing at the protesters because I said, well, it's not illegal, is it? And they said, (laughs) they said, Leslie Jordan weighs in and they said, oh, it's not illegal, but it's illegal to uh, incite a fight. Yes. And I said, so what are they doing? And then I got in a nice conversation with them and with a young Christian, 18 year old kid came over and I won't go into a huge amount of detail, but we had a dialogue and it ended with me saying, I want to know if you're really obeying the scriptures and if you're really listening to what Christ's message was, which was love. When was the last time that you helped someone hungry? When was the last time that you you fed or clothed somebody who was in need? And he said, uh, I can't remember. I know it's been a long time. And I said, well, shame on you. You should not be here because we really don't want you here. We, we, we do not need you. They do. 
And he asked me for my email address, and he walked away. Well, look at you, changing hearts and minds. Just one. The other ones were just screaming at me the whole time. Here's my problem with that judge not let you be judge scripture. I like to judge. <laughs> yes, we well, So I don't use well, that one in arguments very often because I'm like, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and judge you, and you can judge me because I'm a narcissist, and I don't care. Well, look, here's the way. You know, people have pointed that out to me. Well, you're judging Del Shores, and I go, I'm not a Christian. I'm just quoting your scripture. So the, I, I, I don't, it doesn't apply to me. Right. You're the one that has to do it. So, so you have to do it. I don't have to play by your I rules. Can, just because I can quote your book doesn't mean that I believe it all. Well, good. I'm so glad that you and the steak people had fun in North Carolina. I was like, you're talking about a little town. And I'm like, little town. It's a bigot village every day. <laughs> full of homophobes. But, but I, good for them. You Five years what? in. That's amazing. And, and they had 250 protesters the first year and only six or seven this year. So they are there is progress being made down there. In our. Our equality update the, is brought to you by Equality Vodka. Equality Vodka is an ultra premium vodka brand with one agenda equality for all. Support our LGBT communities by asking for Equality Vodka everywhere. Join Equality Vodka on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. One voice, one vodka. Equality Vodka, and they've got such great packaging. Look at that. Thank you, Equality Every, Vodka, for sponsoring our show. Every single bottle of Equality Vodka purchased results in a donation to a recognized nonprofit organization advancing the equality movement for the LGBT community. For more information, visit them at equalityvodka.com. Now, on to our equality news. Uh, super exciting, and of course, we're all waiting for when is the marriage equality decision coming. Now, uh, you'll read it all over the internet. Everyone has a thought. It's going to be tomorrow. It's Thursday morning, but but they've added a special Friday, and some people are saying, well, Friday is the anniversary of the Windsor decision, so it's going to be Friday, and it gives us the weekend to celebrate. Or they could save it till last on Monday. So the truth is, anywhere you read on the internet that tells you for sure when it's going to be, nobody knows. But those are the three options. So by next week's show, we will have an answer. Yes, and if it does come in, and we, we're so hopeful that it's going to come in in our favor... It would be a good, you know, it would help the economy if yes. they did it on Friday. That Everybody could be, be yeah. drinking a quality vodka That's to celebrate. Right. <laughs> Ask for a quality vodka to celebrate. Absolutely. Well, while we wait, uh, there is still exciting equality news. Marriage equality in Mexico. Uh, on June 3rd, the Supreme Court of Justice in Mexico made history, saying the norms that used to ban same-sex marriages in the country have been declared un unconstitutional in all of the states across Mexico. Now, it's a sort of strange thing because the laws are still on the books of the individual states and same-sex couples may have to file suit to force the civil registries to allow them uh, but Mexico is definitely moving that direction their court their the way their systems govern their laws is slightly different than ours so it doesn't immediately overturn all of the laws it just means they have been declared unconstitutional it may take some legwork on the part of some same-sex couples but Mexico's getting there but who would have thought Mexico before us right I mean it's amazing um, and then, of course, on the opposite side of the table, uh, we've discussed how Italy is uh, the one of the only major uh, European countries uh, with no civil union or any kind of capacity. And over the weekend, hundreds of thousands of people gathered in Rome to protest the plan by the Italian prime minister to legalize civil unions. Uh, many people said the sort of uh, save the children kind of idea, but a recent poll found that 51% of Italians support marriage equality, so Prime Minister Renzi hopes to pass the civil union bill next month. It's a long way from full marriage equality, uh, but he is definitely fighting actively on our side against the strong influence of the Catholic Church in Italy, so he should certainly be applauded. Yay. And I love this story. The smallest country in the world, Pitcairn Island, is a tiny speck in the Pacific that's home to 48 people, passed a law allowing same-sex marriage. It happened back in May, uh, but it just made the news because they basically post their new laws on a bulletin board on the veranda in the center of the little <laughs> town. Uh, it was first settled in 1790, and 48 people live there. They don't actually even have any gay people. Um, but welcome to the land of marriage equality, well, I, Pitcairn. I, I'd never even heard know, of it. You know, two bored gay guys are going to move there and make it 50. Just to now, be the first, so be the the first. first couple to get married at Pitcairn <laughs> Island. I, I just want to know their whole, I, I want to know more about this place with, uh, like, who's the president or is there a, I mean, it's, it's 48 people. Everybody has to be important. Yeah, and it's got to be real I, awkward for that couple of people you know everybody doesn't like. Everybody yeah. hates that one family and they're like, God, would they just move? It's like, it, you know, we go, in my hometown, we go, everybody knows everybody, our town so small but this is everybody knows everybody in our I country <laughs> and at some point like one lady somebody there had been there like nine generations i was like don't you eventually need new people to move in just for the gene pool 
Yeah, that would be kind of like, you know. Who knows? Well, good uh, for them. Inbreeding. Inbreeding could start. Um, We've talked previously about how uh, Bo- Governor Bobby Jindal of Louisiana, who, by the way, just S- announced that he is running for president today with the weirdest video. I didn't even show this to you. It's a video of him telling his three children, but the camera's up in a tree and, the, and a tree branch is blocking his head while they tell their kids he's going to run for president. It's just so awkward. It's worse even than that weird runway walk he did at the State of the Union a couple of years ago. I don't like him. Nobody does. Um, well, IBM was supposed to hold a big ribbon cutting on Monday for its new National Service Center in Baton Rouge, and they had just basically quietly moved it off the calendar. They, they had had it reserved for months, but they express, expressed strong opposition to the religious freedom bill back in mid-April that Governor Bobby Jindal went on to create in an executive order after the legislature came to their senses and didn't pass it. So uh, businesses continue to lead the way in pressuring people. Yes, and good. All right, well, in a new segment celebrating Pride Month, are we proud of Pride? Here are fun traditions that we found uh, all around the world of unique parties that various cities have to celebrate their Pride, and we just thought we'd share them to you. And by we found them, uh, we mean Emerson found them, Obviously. and he shared them with me, <laughs> and I'm going to take credit, but I loved the first one. Uh, in San Francisco, of course, there's the men's spanking party. Uh, they live out their paddling fantasies. What's not to love about that? Amsterdam Pride hosts an event at an all-nude gay club where the dress code is shoes only. I like that. Well, I have to tell you, one of my backpacking trips, I went to Amsterdam and went to those one of those parties. It was on a Sunday afternoon at like barbecue time from like 5 to 9. And you do, you check all your clothes at the door. They give you a drink ticket to put in your sock. They mark your drinks and you pay when you leave. So they judge you by your dick and your shoes. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> It's like, okay, and in D.C., we've got Jell-O wrestling, which I thought this sounds like a lot of fun, but it's female only. A 50-gallon pull of Jell-O. You know, I, I think don't think be, that sounds fun, no. No, oh, I think it'd be so fun to wrestle in Jell-O. It's fun, I guess, while you're in it for like a hot minute, but the second you get out, that sugar water starts drying all sticky all over you. You have to plan ahead, Emerson. You have hot showers waiting and towels. You just get out of the Jell-O or someone licks you off for a little bit and then you, <laughs> and then you shower. Well, in Tokyo, they have a fun thing called Slide the City. It features a 300-meter-long water slide that runs through the city. It takes 30 seconds to run the full length of it. Okay, and I've just... I've been here. I'm like ignorance. It's, is it Sao Paulo? Is that how you say Sao it? Paulo? Yes. Sao Paulo. Sao Okay. Uh, pride. That's 2.5 million Bless people. Is hard. I know. Sometimes, you know, I did, it, it just, I did, there's <laughs> some certain things I did not learn. Um, pronunciation. If it's not Spanish, I did not pronounce it. I Sao Paulo in Sao, Brazil. So, Well, that's, uh, isn't Bra- Brazilian? Is it's it Portuguese. Portuguese. Yes. Yeah, that's Portuguese. Mm-hmm. Pride, 2.5 million people per year. Uh, Guinness Book of, of World Records since, uh, that's not a tradition it's just a lot of people we should uh, go to that one and i'll learn how to say their city <laughs> <laughs> but you might that might need to happen first a toronto pride hosts burlesque go go it's the largest burlesque review in canada and shanghai look i said that right a uh, rainbow bike ride six teams each representing a different color in the rainbow i love this they navigate through different routes in the city then they join up at the end to create a spectrum so great and yeah. in new york the dance on the pier 26 is the world's longest running lgbt fireworks display and finally Finally, Madrid, Carrera de Tacones, men in wigs and high heels take to the cobblestone streets of Madrid in this annual stiletto race. Yes, men in stilettos running through cobblestone streets. Love I mean, that it. is genuinely a challenge. There, yeah, and there's, there's, you've got to know there's going to be some twisted ankles in that. Yes. Race. All right, flashing through the gay news. Uh, I'm sure everyone's been watching the discussion that's been going on surrounding the Confederate flag display in South Carolina, uh, which has led to uh, today in Alabama, they quietly took down four Confederate flags. The governor just said, take it down. I have taxes and things to be worrying about, and this could become a distraction. But it has led to a very strange response from the uh, conservative right, terrified of the coming marriage equality decision, uh, and lashing out at LGBT people, where they have uh, now attempted to come to... uh, 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 One more time. They have now attempted to come to claim Sao Paulo oh, right no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's quite the same uh, they've attempted to claim no that I'm just practicing I'm sorry <laughs> that the LGBT flag is also a, pla- a flag of oppression Brian Fisher on his radio show uh, said this week, if we're going to remove symbols of oppression from our culture, any flag that represents bigotry, hatred, slavery, or oppression needs to be removed then the next flag to go out should be the rainbow flag of the gay Reich 
It represents big Ugh. gay. It represents what I'm calling for the first time the Gay Reich. They've got a flag just like the Nazis had their flag. The Nazis had a flag. The Confederates have a flag. The U.S. has a flag. The gay lobby, big gay. The gay Gestapo, they've got a flag, and it's the rainbow flag. That flag is a symbol of slavery and oppression and bigotry and prejudice and bias. I want to thank him for saying this because it makes him look so stupid. I, I mean, hit him with that, that. It's just getting worse and worse. That is so ridiculous. Um, uh, but wow. it's interesting, you know, when people go on and on about like it's sort of just generally horrible to compare anything to the Nazis or to the Third Reich. Uh, but the idea that to suggest that a flag that is uh, represents a group of p historically oppressed people is somehow uh, uh, oppressing you. It's, it goes back to that thing of saying, well, if we have to be tolerant, you have to be tolerant of our intolerant ideas. I'm sorry. Our intolerance of your intolerance is not equivalent. No. And that's uh, that's that's what uh, when I was having a uh, discussion or fights with that protester, he said, well, you're not very tolerant are you i said no i'm not i don't want to be tolerated and i'm not tolerant of you so no i'm not Whew. all right flashing on all right we have in texas some news uh an oil exec bashed a gay, uh, gay man there uh anthony farah the president of houston's midstar energy lp swore at a gay couple this was in austin texas uh he passed uh them in his vehicle he stopped the car in a lane of traffic got out and then proceeded to knock the man unconscious. Uh, the story is that Andy Smith and uh, his his partner, uh, husband, Paul Von Wooperfeld, were walking in Austin with when a truck nearly hit them. Smil Smith yelled out. He said, you nearly hit, hit us, Farrah. You know, replied, fuck you, faggot. Uh, Smith then responded, what did you say? He said, fuck you, faggot. So he stopped his truck in a lane of traffic. He got out. Smith told him, Farrah, he, he, you cannot call me that. He goes, you can't make me stop. I'll kick your ass. And that's exactly what he did. So um, Von Wooperfeld, Smith's husband, said Farrah, then hit Smith, ran to his car, drove off. His f face was swollen and bloody from where he had been punched with cuts on his nose, right cheek, and chin. He was unconscious for around 30 to 45 seconds. When he came around, he was groggy and disoriented, and Farah has been arrested on several other, t uh, several other times in Texas and Pennsylvania. So this is uh, the Dallas Voice gave us that, that uh, story. Well, and this next one, because uh, these are related in an important point I want to make. Uh, a 16-year-old boy and his boyfriend in Lake George, New York, uh, were passed by four guys in a car yelling homophobic slows at them, and then they shot at them with a BB gun that police said could have easily been mistaken for a handgun. And uh, the reason I wanted to highlight these two stories is there's a really important thing for all of us to remember and consider as we uh, anticipate the Supreme Court decision is that when you come for the beliefs of bigots, uh, when you threaten uh, their worldview, uh, they tend to lash out. Um, and if the Supreme Court rules the way that we want it to, there will be celebrations all across the country. And not to put a damper on it, but it's important to be vigilant uh, about how... Uh, about your surroundings as you attend celebrations, yes. as you travel through uh, neighborhoods or cities, if you live in a town where it's a little more dangerous, that unfortunately uh, our victories uh, may cause people like this uh, to lash out. So uh, not to uh, dampen the festivities, but be aware of your surroundings and make sure that you're safe. Make sure that you're attending these functions with other groups of people, that you consider where you park your car. Um, it's important that we win these victories, but it's important that we be safe uh, as we continue to change hearts and Such minds. Such good advice. I'm terrible about that. I, I think I'm invincible. I think I can go in any city that I go into, and I, I'm, I'm Del Shores. I, you know, I have this voice. I can say whatever I want to, and you know what? We do have to be, for our family and friends and for ourselves, we do have to be more cautious. All right. Well, we're both Southern Baptists, or former Southern Baptists, and I love the way that Emerson uh, headlines sometimes. He put uh, Southern Baptist head. Uh -huh. uh, so last week, the head of the Southern Baptist Convention, Ronnie Floyd, at their annual meeting called on the Supreme Court not to declare a constitutional right to same-sex marriage and vowed to never officiate a same-sex union. I want to just read what he had to say. Go ahead, preach. He goes, I want to remind everyone today, humbly, the Supreme Court of the United States is not the final authority, nor is the culture itself, but the Bible is God's final authority about marriage, and on this book, we stand. He got a standing ovation after he said that. 
And he said, it's time to lead. I declare to everyone today as a minister of the gospel, I will not officiate over any sex, same unions or same sex marriage ceremony. I, ceremonies. I completely refuse. While some evangelists may be bowing down to the deception of the inclusiveness of same sex marriage, we will not bow down, nor we will not be silent. So, you know, I, I, I started tweeting this asshole, and I was like, who wants you to officiate? We don't want you to officiate our weddings. I, he, I, I just wanted him to tweet me back, or I wanted to get unblocked or something. Just It would just be a badge of honor to be blocked by Ronnie Floyd, the president of the Southern Baptist. He, I, I called on my fans to tweet him. We just had a t- We just all tweeted him. Nothing. But I'm glad you have such lofty goals. Yes, and, a lot, and time on my hands to do such Absolutely. things. Absolutely. So anyway, that's what's going on in the Southern Baptist. And they did, oh. they, they, they declared, they, they made some sort of resolution, blah, 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 that, you know. Well, but boo. the good news is their numbers are down for the many, many years in a row. And also baptisms were down to the lowest number since 1947. So guess what, Ronnie Floyd? It ain't a working. Well, bless their bigoted hearts. In other news, uh, I kind of love this because it's sort of daddy's dying. Who's got the gay will um, (laughs) story. That's my next play. Totally. (laughs) Mazzy Omoyo was a captain at the United Touring Company in Zimbabwe, and the 32-year-old man died in May, leaving behind a house, a widow, four children aged 5 to 14, and a secret male lover. Now the boyfriend and the wife are fighting over the house. That just has to be so awkward. The wife apparently didn't even know he existed. He owned a small house in the suburbs where he allegedly kept the 30-year-old boyfriend. And according to the boyfriend, he and the, and the man had been companions since adolescence, and he was promised the house after his death. But Mayo's widow is trying to have him evicted. She said, we've got the keys, and we don't know how to get in, when it's, which on its own is a crime. He's not even talking to us, and each time we go to the house, we didn't find him. Some property is missing, and he's also rented out some of the rooms. I mean, that literally feels like an African version of like your play. It is like a this. play. It's a play. I'm surprised that she's willing to get the press. I mean, I just feel like... That's awkward for everybody. Yeah, and it says so much about you that he cheated on you all these many years. Since ado- he had that boyfriend since adolescence. Wow, probably before her. Well, so, and and then quickly, we, there are two new uh, documentaries that are very gay themed, and uh, we're we're we we haven't seen them yet, but we're going to watch them. One of them is called Uniquely Nasty. Uh, it's the U.S. government's war on gay. Uh, it's only thirty minutes, and uh, if you go to Toll Road, you can find the What's that? Yeah, on Yahoo? Is it on? Uh, well, I went to, I yes, but if you go to the, st- well, okay, go, yes, you're right. It's, it is on Yahoo. Um, it is. It is. Go to Toll Road, and the link is there, though. That's where I found it. <laughs> <laughs> we, it it's a part of the Yahoo Viewfinder series. It's original content on Yahoo, so if you just go to the Yahoo page, like, it's under their uh, film series. Yeah, and it's narrated by uh, Matt Bomer and George Dakai. And then, of course, we w- w- highly want to—I mean, I cannot wait to see Larry Kramer's new documentary. Uh, it's on Larry Kramer. Uh, it's called Larry Kramer in Love and Anger. And he's been such a hero of mine for many, many years. Uh, love him or, or hate him. He's done um, amazing things for our community. And uh, he co-founded the Gay Men's uh, Health Crisis Act Up. And that premieres on HBO on June the 29th at 9 p.m. So set your DVRs for that. Uh, it'll be a great way to celebrate because that's Monday night. And so by Monday night, we're going to know. Yes, we are. Um, all right, well, flashing on, I love this story. Uh, there is a Brit brand called uh, Sibling in London, and they just did a football-themed fashion show uh, heavy on Savile Row tailoring and featuring an awful lot of butt cleavage. They are bringing butt cleavage to fashion. The One of the designers said all the lace trousers were knitted. They'd come from a very traditional pair of NFL sports trousers. And, you know, in the NFL, people always wear the jock straps that stick up above Uh, The pants line, and you just naturally get that gap. Well, we just made the tops a bit shorter, so the gap was a bit more obvious. And I gotta say, the photos were quite nice. They were quite nice, but I just feel like that uh, it's it's sort of like a a thin person's. um, Well, or a muscular person, or someone with the greatest. I mean, yes. I mean, I don't know that these need to be the new plumber uniforms. I don't think that they're gonna sell them to sixty-eight-year-old people. But like (laughs) all fashion, not all fashion is for all people. But there are certainly. um, I feel like they could hand these out to the entire cast of Magic Mike XXL for their 
their movie premieres, and there I would be go. happy to see them there sport them. There you go. That's a good, good idea. See? Maybe you should tweet that. Tweet well, that I'm, I somehow don't feel like Matt Bomer's going to respond to me. So, okay, we have uh, Nam has extreme pledge for Republicans to sign. That's the National Organization for Marriage, if you didn't know that. Uh, so here, quickly, I'm going to run through uh, this pledge that they want everybody to sign. And I want to know, John, will you sign this after I read these? One, support a federal constitution amendment that protects marriage as the union of one man and one woman. Two, oppose and work to overturn any Supreme oh, they're so ambitious, any Supreme Court decision that illegitimately, illegitimately, uh, through the laws of our land, uh, finds a constitutional right to the redefinition of marriage. Three, conduct a, re- conduct a review of regulatory, administrative, and executive actions taken by the current administration that have the effect of undermining marriage and work to restore our policies to be consistent with the proper understanding of marriage as the union of one man and one woman, consistent with this, prevent the promotion of a redefined version of marriage in public schools and other government entities. Four, support the First Amendment Defense Act that recognizes the right of organizations and individuals to act in the public square consistent with their belief that marriage is the union of one man and one woman without fear of retaliation from the government. Five, direct the Department of Justice to investigate, document, and publicize cases of Americans who have been harassed or threatened by exercising key civil rights to organize, to speak, to donate, or to to vote for marriage and to propose new protections if needed. Um, but in so in summation, sign this to enshrine your bigotry in your platform. In other words, this fucking organization is going to be extinct in about a year. That's what I say. They are so desperate. They're clawing with this. Well, and also it's going to be real awkward because usually like, people have si- a lot of people have signed their pledges in the past. They do it every time. But I think they're going to be stuck with, like, Rick Santorum and Mike Huckabee, and that's about it. They, 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 the, the two of them signed. No, not this one. That's a no, different that's one. that's a different one. Okay. Um, so, good luck, Nom. Losers. Okay. Bless their bigoted hearts. Um, I love this next one. Fisher Price has included LGBT families in a new photo campaign in conjunction with Proud Parenting in celebration of Pride Month. Uh, they created a community forum to launch the Proud Parenting LGBT Family Photo Gallery, a curated collection of LGBT parents and their families. The campaign hopes to lead the way to a new generation of families by showcasing some of the country's 3 million LGBT parents and 6 million Americans who have parents that identify as LGBT. And I love this because Fisher-Price is very much and specifically a child-focused company. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's a huge level of inclusion to really uh, step forward and celebrate LGBT families in campaigns that focus on children with products that are marketed to children. Um, and I just think that's really and beautiful. The, and the, the photos are lovely. Uh, John's got a few in, in, in the room for us, but they are really, really beautiful. So hit that link and, and, and you know, celebrate. All right. All right. In our fast flashes. Yeah. That's just where you like. That's like when you have like the trench coat and you just do it real quick. Bam, 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 bam. bam, bam. It's hard for us. Like to you do don't like hold it. Hard for us to do fast flashes. All right. Well, kicking it off. Uh, Saturday night was Broadway Bears. It is the uh, huge Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS fundraiser that happens every year, featuring uh, the hottest chorus boys and girls of Broadway. Over 150 performers get down to nearly nothing, and this year they raised a reported one and a half million dollars. It's crazy. It's a late night burlesque show. And the special guest this year was Laverne Cox. And you can see her number online. We got her right here. She looks gorgeous. She's in a corset with pasties on her titties and kills it in a two-minute number. That is such a good number, too. I mean, it was so well done. She has skills. Yes. Um, It was amazing. It's it's sexy. She got rhythm. It's cheeky. And Jerry Mitchell uh, choreographs the whole thing. And it's an awesome and amazing event. uh, And I love that. And then in Boston, we have Cop Boyfriends. Two men, Jimmy Moshia and Sean McIver. Just graduated the Boston Police Academy, and they are the first openly gay couple to do so. The two met working security for the gay bar, club, cafe. And I know when you hear this story, you go, oh, fantasy-wise, I want them to be hot. Well, they are. I just, uh, the picture's <laughs> right there. So we got they, our priorities. They li- they, We're they, good. They lived up to it. Yes. So. <laughs> um, And then moving on, tonight, uh, Big Brother begins on CBS. Uh, many uh, Big Brother fans out there, I'm sure, and super fans who watch the live feeds all the time. Well, according to TMZ, um, 
Audrey is a housemate uh, who is the first transgender housemate to join the show. She grew up in a small town in Georgia and transitioned several years ago. Her family had a hard time accepting it, but they're fully supportive and on board, apparently. So tonight is Big Brother, and look for the introduction of the first transgender She's redhead, housemate. redhead, beautiful. Um, and it'll be really interesting because Big Brother several seasons ago had a lot of problems with like racism and homophobia from contestants in the show that they had to address uh, on the air. So here's hoping that Audrey has a fantastic experience and she's able to compete on her own merits and not spend the whole time uh, defending who she is. And with the anniversary of Stonewall coming up uh, June 28th, 1969, that was 46 years ago, uh, New York uh, has declared it a landmark. Uh, New York Landmarks Commission, it was a unanimous vote. Uh, this marks the first time any site in New York City history has been designated a landmark because of its significant in LGBT history. The new designation would provide additional safeguards to keep the building from being changed. So isn't that great? That I is so that. fantastic. Yes. Um, all right. Flashing back to the regular speed news. I loved this. An Indian wildlife magazine called Sanctuary Asia is India's leading wildlife conservation magazine. And they sent out a series of tweets the other day that was rather amazing. They tweeted a photo of two lionesses together. And the tweet said, rarely documented, but here you have it. Two lionesses engage in lesbian love in uh, Mother Nature thinks it's okay. Conduct associated with heterosexual sex is often observed, including gentle bites, licks, pelvic lunges, and growling. Experts say that a female may initiate the process by pursuing another and edging under her to stimulate a mounting. Mm. Um, then they tweeted other animals in homosexual acts, two male elephants mounting, and someone tweeted back, do you mean to imply that humans should follow? Follow? And the magazine <laughs> said, we're not implying anything. We're stating that gay lesbian relationships are found in nature, and this was the perfect tagline. What's more natural than nature? Nice. Mic drop! Sanctuary yes. Asia? Yes. And then we have the uh, one million moms are back in the news. I don't think they've gotten to one million. I don't think they're even close. Think they, they Wait, you it, tell the story and I'll see what their find Facebook out page how has. So they're mad at lesbian yogurt because Chobani introduced a little commercial, this simple commercial during Pride Month featuring two women. And I, I want to just quote them. I'm just going to make one million moms one silly Southern woman's voice. Chobani should be ashamed of their latest commercial for uh, my, my my Southern woman. By the way, sounds a lot like Leslie Jordan. Makes sense. Uh, that Chobani makes sense. should be ashamed of their latest commercial for attempting to normalize sin by featuring two women naked in bed together. This commercial not only promotes same-sex relationships by including two lesbians, but also same-sex marriage because the two women wearing mat are wearing matching wedding bands. What does selling yogurt have to do? With gay sex nothing at all but chobani wants to make the association one million moms how many really <laughs> seventy three thousand. they barely have more fans than you seventy three thousand moms continue <laughs> thank you <What? laughs> I, I gotta catch up with those fucking moms you only need five thousand please more. like my fan page hey okay they, one million moms continues to stand up for biblical truth which is very clear in romans one 26 through 27 about this particular type of lifestyle. I printed that scripture out, but I'm not going to read it. It's just, you know, more, more bullshit. They have 73,396 likes on Facebook. That's not even 10% of 1 million. It's 7.3% of 1 million. And you know some are the, like those trolls that come to my page are liking that page just so they can comment. However, <laughs> I feel like maybe I should be a little, because that's eight times, that's... Nine times more than I have. I Yo, have 8,000. Give Emerson so, some love. And so like I guess I can't page. be too shady against the 1 million. But but in fairness, my page does not say Emerson's 1 million fans. No, it does not. It just it's, says Emerson Collins. I mean, if you're going to be that ambitious, you know, come on. Hubris. Work it. Work it. Get those. Uh, they're all going to have 53. Well, maybe it's 1 million moms who don't understand the internet. Well, I don't know what selling yogurt has to do with gay sex. One, <laughs> one, million, one million bigot moms doesn't roll off the tongue quite so easily, I guess. All right, now we moving on. Relentlessly gay. Oh, y'all have probably heard this story, but Julie Baker in Baltimore received a note from a neighbor. Your yard is becoming relentlessly gay. Myself and the others in the neighborhood ask that you tone it down. This is a Christian area, and there are children. Keep it up, and I will be forced to call the police on you. Your kind need to have respect for God. She and she had rainbow lights spelling out the words love and family. I'm not sure what would be more befitting for children than those two words. 
So she decided to start a GoFundMe to make her yard even more relentlessly gayer. And she said, I need more rainbows, many, many more rainbows. So I'm starting this fundraiser so I can work to make my home even more relentlessly gay. If we go high enough, I will see if I can get a rainbow roof (laughs) because of my invisible, relentlessly gay rainbow dragon should live up there in style. Put simply, I am a widow and the mother of four children. My youngest is in high school and I will not relent to hatred. Instead, I will battle it with whimsy and beauty and laughter and love wrapped around my home, yard, and family. And she uh, asked for $5,000 and she has passed 43000 before we went on the air. Crazy. Uh, Julie Baker, I aspire to that. I aspire to be relentlessly gay. I feel like I kind of am. Yeah. Relentlessly gay. It just sounds so oppressive. But you are so relentlessly gay. But your place isn't. I mean, you're, you know. No, but I mean, like, well, when you're home, it is. (laughs) Well, I mean, if I'm there, you know, I say this on Periscope all the time. From on on the gay scale from one to ten, I'm like a seventy-two. Yes, you are. I, or this way, this is the other one I like. I've never said it on the radio. On a scale from one to Richard Simmons, I'm like an Anderson Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna take offense to that. You just know they will. Good. You know what they say about being offended? It is your right and mine not to care. It, I always say in my shows, you you know you have the choice. Be nobody's making all you listen. Right. Well, listen. Well, there's on. twenty thousand people who keep tuning in. Which by the way is like two and a half times more people than Y'all, I have on my Facebook you page. Periscope people go like his Facebook. He's trying to we we need to pass the million dollar mobs. <laughs> now, That's our I, goal. Now I'm going to just set a goal of I'd like to get to 10,000. That seems <laughs> okay. reasonable. I'd like 74,000 fans you just, next d- Yeah, week. you could pass them. I, I'm a, it's going to take me some work. I gotta, All right. We, all right. Um, in other uh, genuinely exciting news, <clears throat> um, today was President Obama's uh, reception uh, for Pride Month. But yesterday, the federal government announced uh, that all federal employee health insurers have to include transition related health care coverage for transgender employees in their plan, saying effective January 1st. No carrier participating in the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program may have a general exclusion of services, drugs, or supplies related to gender transition. So that's really amazing. You know, it's like uh, the federal government may not be able to change uh, laws in the legislature, but executive orders and executive action can uh, impact all federal contractors. And that's the way many rights have started is to start them for federal employees and then spread it out from there. So in the continuing fight for uh, trans rights, health care uh, coverage, uh, this is a huge and exciting step yes and it's it's so much visibility for our trans community i'm just i'm really happy that this is happening all of this all right so let's let's go over to britain just for a second james wharton author of out in the army my life as a gay soldier uh talks about uh prince harry which i love this story he said prince harry stepped in and told a group of very unhappy soldiers to back the fuck off Leave him alone. The night before he had got the night before the author James Wharton had gotten it, uh, a little close. It, uh, he was drunk and got a little close to a soldier. And the next morning, a group of angry sergeants came for him. Harry heard about it. He confronted the other soldiers and he made it clear in quotes that they would be for the high jump. If uh, this is uh, they, they do it, such do a it. British expression. You, you've no. done Britain. Do, do, do the do it very British. Uh-uh. That they would be for the high jump if they gave me another second hassles over the issue, my sexuality. I remember watching him put these much older, much more experienced soldiers firmly in their place, and the group walked away visibly with their tails between their legs. He returned to me and said, unassumingly, you won't hear from that lot again. I like you doing it because it sounds so Sweeney Todd, and it's way more fun. Is it? Is it it's sort of the Cockney stuff. It's that Cockney adjacent. Well, it's like lots of people end up doing the Eliza Doolittle. You that's, know. That's, Come on, Dover! That's about as good Move as your I, blooming I told off. you. It's, well, it's usually that I do every accent in, in Spanish. Well, you know? yes, all of yours end up <laughs> so, a little Latina. So there there you have it. Um, That's so great. Um, All right, we did this story a couple of weeks ago, and uh, some uh, new information has come out of it, and I feel like it's important uh, when we go for somebody in a story and new information is revealed uh, to bring that forward. We talked earlier this year about former San Diego City Council member and Republican Carl DeMeo, who narrowly lost his bid for Congress uh, because uh, two men came forward claiming uh, sexual harassment against him. Campaign staffer Todd Bosnich 
who DeMaio had fired for plagiarism, now admits he made up the emails to support his harassment wow. charges that DeMaio attempted to buy his silence for $50,000. And last week, he, a couple of weeks ago, he pleaded guilty in federal court to obstruction of justice. Uh, after the ordeal, DeMaio said he's no longer interested in politics, saying he and his partner are still recovering from the experience. And I, uh, this kind of hit me a little bit. He said he also feels that the LGBT community has not come to his defense for one particular reason. He said, if I were a gay Democrat and a Republican tried doing what Scott Peters did to me, there would be rioting in the streets in the middle of the election. But it's okay to do it to a Republican. You know, we really don't want you to break through that glass ceiling. And so that was very challenging. And I have to admit, there's a part of me that realizes I think he might be a little bit right. If he had been a gay Democrat running against Mm -hmm. a Republican when all of this went down... I think we would have all dug harder and further into the validity of the charges, but because he's a gay Republican and we're very resistant to that uh, because so many feel that that's uh, betraying our civil rights for their financial gain, uh, that maybe uh, people didn't dig as hard into the circumstances when they happened, and he barely lost that election. Um, And I don't think it's too big a leap to think that the scandal uh, contributed to that at the last minute. Well, I can't help but believe it did. I I think it did, and I mean, we, we were part of the contribution. We really were. We reported on this. And we, um, so Carl, uh, an apology for me, frankly, for uh, not being willing to dig show. a little deeper. Um, and hopefully, uh, your political mindedness uh, can contribute uh, in other ways. Um, so we wish you best of luck and in the things you choose to do yeah, besides politics. Come on our show sometime. We, 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 that, he'd be a, a great guest for us. Uh, yes. So all, all right. right, let's check in with crazy. Yes. Uh, okay. This is ba- bananas. And lest anyone ever think that we don't also go after gay people that do crazy things. Um, a 29-year-old woman from Perth, Australia pretended to have an abortion in order to give her baby to her gay best friend. (laughs) I mean, like, the father exists. Uh, The pair went so far as to create a Facebook page for a made-up surrogate who they named Claire Green. They also made her a lesbian lawyer to fool her ex-partner. I mean, they thought deep into this. Like, we got a lesbian to have the baby for us. She's an attorney. Um, and the gay man paid for the baby from his friend for 300 pounds, and both of them have been given three years in prison uh, for the fraud. Who got the baby? Well, I assume it went to the father. Uh, the biological father only suspected <laughs> something was amiss when someone nonchalantly mentioned it. he was the spitting image of the child. How crazy do you have to be? Like, these like these 30-year-old grown-ups. Well, I also want to know how intimate they got during that nine months of pregnancy. That's kind of odd that she was able to fake an abortion and then give birth, and the husband didn't no, know. No, not a husband. Ex-partner. Oh, he was not involved. Like an ex. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. But she just didn't tell him, I'm pregnant with your baby, or they broke up at early in the pregnancy, and so she claimed an abortion, and I guess just hid for six months, didn't take any photos, because, you know, nowadays, Instagram, Facebook... It's hard to pull off that kind of fraud. You gotta think this out. I know. You know. I've been watching um, Catfish. That's and hella it, creepy. I mean, like, they, that's these people genuinely it's crazy. terrifying. All right, more more gnashing of teeth from the right pastors. Uh, Texas pastor, of course. Why is it? All, it's almost always Texas. Well, for that us. crazy. The craziest one right now is that Arizona man. That so is they the win. craziest one. But Texas pastor Rick Scarborough said. If participating in the sanction, I see the same voice for all these pastors. I'm going to deepen him. If participating in the sanction of same-sex marriage is the price of citizenship in the U.S., we know what's coming. We're simply being preemptive and saying, no matter what the cost, we are not going to bow. We are not going to bend, and we will burn. Well, we'll burn. I like the match. I thought we were going to burn. Well, I'm I mean, so confused. I thought I was going to burn in hell. That's what they told me in, in North Carolina, that I was going to hell to burn. And we're already flaming. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Well that's, well, that's how we solve it. We should just go all stand around and we can start that fire with our flames. And um, then, there's a related piece of this. that I put it on yours? Yes, yes. Okay. Go ahead, though. Uh, well... Uh, this Rick Scarborough has also written a marriage pledge. In addition to everybody, all the crazy conservatives writing marriage pledges that candidates, they're going to spend all their time signing pledges um, that Mike Huckabee and Rick Santorum have both actually already signed this particular pledge. And it ended reiterating something that Mike Huckabee said 
uh, that there was a recent comparison of a pro equality ruling from the Supreme Court on marriage equality uh, that is compared to the 1887 Dred Scott decision by the Supreme Court that many look back on as the worst decision the Supreme Court ever made, which ruled that African Americans could not be citizens of the U.S. This pledge promises to view any decision by the Supreme Court or any court the same way history views the Dred Scott decision. Now, that's just let's break this down for a minute. Would you hit that crazy thing one more time? Yeah. That's just crazy. That's the, the Dred, the original Dred Scott decision said that uh, black people couldn't be citizens. Right. So they were unequal. So if marriage equality is ruled and gay people and same-sex couples are deemed to be equal. They're going to look at this as the same. Like, yo, that's like saying, like, look at this black and this is white, but we're going to call them the same. God, I hope he makes They're literally it to, opposite. To the debates. I want Mike Huckabee to make it to the debates with all this stupid... Do you want Donald Trump to make it to the debates? Yeah, kind of. And I want a fan to be blowing and that his hair... I just want one time the hair to go over. You know what my problem with that is? Because I... Clearly, I love horrible television. I love horrible television. But... I don't want us to treat politics like reality television. And if Donald Trump is standing there, no matter how m well thought out his lunatic points are, it will become a circus. And I don't, I don't, I don't vote Republican. I'm not going to vote Republican. But it is important to our legislative equality on both sides of the aisle that there be a well thought out and well articulated Republican platform. And if this man gets up there and distracts it like it's a circus sideshow. I think that's not just a disservice to the Republicans. I think it's a disservice to all of us in the le in the political system. Well, I'm glad you thought about that because I don't give a shit. <laughs> I just want to. Well, I just, it matters for I, our country. Well, um, I, I, you know, I just want them to look bad. I want every Republican to look bad. So if, yeah, they, but if, like, if bringing but, Donald Trump in makes everybody look bad, I say bring him in. But at the end of the day, it's important to our system that there be an intelligent and well thought out Republican on the other side of the voting. It's not in anyone's best interest for like one party to be a complete basket. And who case. do you think that might be? Well, I don't know. That's what the debates are supposed to teach us. And if he gets up there and all the cameras are focused on Donald Trump and he's the only person we're paying attention to who's not going to win, we're not going to end up with a Republican candidate who knows what they're talking Is about. Is Santorum running? Has he yeah, declared? Uh, oh, I don't think he has declared his... Well, he's signed this pledge. I think he declared just no one cares. All right. Well, let's move on. Um, schools that teach homosexuality should be held responsible for STDs. Okay, this is Gary Glenn. This is still, remember, this is uh, our crazy section. A Republican member of the Michigan House of Representatives. These are people who are in public office. Former head of the AFA's Michigan chapter, appearing in a new documentary called Light Wins, How to Overcome the Criminalization of Christianity, where he declares... If some young person hears at school that it's okay to be gay and then comes down with a fatal disease as a result, school officials should be legally liable individually and in their official capacities financially and maybe even criminal. And I said to you, I said, what about a straight couple that gets an STD? I mean, this is just such crazy bullshit. I mean, so, yes, because like you got all those like there are plenty of STDs that uh, I'm pretty sure they're not teaching you how to get an STD. They're teaching you how not to get one. Exactly. Is the goal of sex education. Yes. Yes. He was just wanting to say that that HIV AIDS is specifically a gay disease and if anybody comes down because you're teaching homosexuality th that's exactly what he said without exactly saying that uh, all right and then finally you've uh, got a sports ball story well for what's us. gay in sports ball it's so funny because we're at the end of the show and we actually have several minutes left like I've but been that's good because I, I, I there is something I want to say I've been this. extending on topics and for the first time in the history of the show it's you that's rushing us along and not me look at this I know we got we've every story you variety yet. giving you choices and variety Variety. Well, finally, what's gay in sports ball? It was super exciting to find out uh, that opera singer Brianna Sinclair became the first transgender woman to sing the national anthem at a professional sp sporting event, a sports ball event. She sang it at an Oakland A's game. I believe that that's the space ball variety of sports ball. I love this is a stretch for, for, for sports ball. I it's a, a little bit. What do you mean? She sang it at a sports singer, ball game. Okay. <laughs> that's like talking about Beyonce at the Super Bowl with sports ball. I know. We'll we'll bring What's I your love, other thing you but, won't talk about? Well I just want to say, I mean here we are. We're we're in a, we're we you can tell we're in a giddy mood and we're in a happy mood and we're all anticipating this and even the religious people all they're all shouting and crying because they do believe that we are about to win this. 
But, you know, Rachel Maddow said the other day, she said, you know, we need to prep and it, it, because if we get too overzealous and it doesn't come in our way, and it, there is a possibility that it cannot, and I hope that does not happen, but we will continue to, this fight. We will continue um, our, our journey towards equality. It'll just take a different path. Well, so, I ain't going to worry about it unless it comes in negative. Well, I, I, I agree with you, and I, I, I want to get up tomorrow at 6 o'clock or Friday morning at 6 o'clock and go right on the internet and start crying. That's what I want. Because to me, anticipating it, negative... But I won't, I won't cry. Good, good cry. Good cry. <laughs> yes. Well, because to me, worrying about something beforehand means you worry about it twice. Because if you worry about something That's before great. it goes wrong, then you worry about it before and then you worry about it after it goes wrong. Well, let's prepare for the worst and hope for the best, right? Isn't that what they say? Absolutely. And we and are. Our team is. We're, we're really excited about our new movie, A Very Sorted Wedding. We are prepping to rewrite it to accommodate this decision and that's, we we are all that's right if yes. it happens tomorrow friday you can get to work yes i i will get to work and gladly we'll get to work so and we, then and we'll continue our equality updates we will continue everything no matter what i mean because because we're going to see a lot of hate being spewed at us as a result of this decision. Well, and regardless, you know, this is a very important battle, but it is only one in the war. Um, and if uh, we do win this victory, then it's exciting because we can put that money and those resources and all of that energy uh, towards other fight for equalities. There's still uh, issues for women and people of color. And in the LGBT community, it's important that we all be fighting uh, for trans rights now that all of this uh, visibility continues uh, to grow for them. Because I was thinking about it. And, you know, if you only fight for equality up to the end point, that it includes you that is self-interest not mm -hmm. activism that's exactly right um, and it is important that we all uh, continue uh, to do so well you know and I have nobody in my life so I'm, I'm really fighting for it and I don't think I'm going to get married again so but I just want I want to have the option if, the, if, if it were to happen so absolutely well and tonight uh, we're attending a really exciting event uh, called Signs of Visibility uh, put on by Craig Ramsey and Brandon Liberati that were on our show married um, married uh, and because they have this sort organization and they're creating signs uh, for married same-sex couples to be able to put in their yard uh, to cr continue to uh, create visibility uh, in uh, homes across the country which is exciting and it's awesome to support that and Blake McIver and a number of awesome people are singing on it so we get to go see a show yes we do and I want to say a real quick shout out to Rosemary Alexander she's she's sick Dr. Eve is sick and she's had a, a, a tough couple of weeks and we love you so much get better and also want to give a big birthday shout out tomorrow is Debbie Holiday's birthday. Happy birthday, Debbie Holiday. We love you on this show. And we love all of you for listening. Thank you so much. We will be back next week on the Dylan Emerson Show. With uh, And thank you, Equality Vodka, for sponsoring our show. You keep us on the air, and we appreciate that. That's it, y'all. We'll see you next week. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBN.